Okay, ready, go. Okay, ready, go. So this is the front of you. Go. So first of all, the back swing is not large. About here. Okay. And also, as you reach uh, to this position, the back swing is really slow. So in the back swing, you are not preparing your body at all. The only thing you do is just uh, bring the club up here. And then from here, try to hit hard by opening the body quite a bit. So your hands tend, tend to uh, travel inward. Okay. And then your ball should be a little bit pull with that again. So let me play this again, front of, uh, front of you, you see. So it's a fairly arm driven here. Yeah. And then in the uh, down the line view here. Go. So it's a slow and then you stop about here. And when you start the downswing, your body already turns here and then try to swing hard with the muscles okay. yeah so one thing you have to understand is uh, the importance of uh, the backswing i also made this a stupid um, statement uh, when i initially started the <laughs> research on golf somebody asked me what's the purpose of backswing so i said well probably bring the club here okay to the initial position for the downswing and, but uh, as I studied the swing motion more and more, I realized that the, the backswing is really important. Backswing prepares your body. The backswing is a, basically the opposite motion. This is the, the main motion here, downswing. The backswing is the opposite motion. It's called the counter movement. So counter movement is uh, the, uh, the motion in the opposite direction before the main motion. The mechanically speaking, if you use the counter movement well, then you will have a lot of benefits. Uh, the initial condition for the downswing becomes really good. Because um, what happens is, uh, at, toward the end of the backswing, when you're moving this way, then you have to slow this down, you know, to change the direction. But in order to slow this down, in order to uh, decelerate the body, you need the torque from outside. In other words, you are using the ground to generate the, the deceleration torque. And then that torque is also used in the downswing. So as you, your body turns this way in the backswing, the torque is actually acting in the opposite direction. It will slow down this motion and then as you start the downswing, that torque will be used. And then, so what happens is, um, so when you, have, when you actively slow down the backswing, then at the end of the backswing or at the beginning of the downswing, you already have a fairly large torque acting on the system. Then using that, you can start the downswing acceleration right away. But if you go slow here, then there's not much to uh, you know, decelerate here. So you're not using the ground that much. There's no need to use the ground that much. So just go here and then you have to start all over on the down. Yeah. So using the counter movement to have really good uh, initial conditions for the downswing is important. And also, the same way, we also use the muscles to slow down this motion, right? And then the same muscles are used in accelerating the downward motion. And then when you, are, when you decelerate the body motion, then muscles get longer. Because the muscle is pulling this way, body is going that way, then you have deceleration, right? So as the body moves this way, muscle is pulling this way, the actual, actually the muscle gets longer. When the muscle gets longer, it's easier to generate larger force with the same effort. It's a rubber band. Mm. Yeah. But it's more than that, because uh, the muscle has both the elastic component and also a contractile component. So you can actively contract the muscle not just relying on the elastic component. And then 
So uh, particularly this contractor component, if the muscle gets longer, uh, you know, with the fast motion, then uh, the, the contractor component can generate large amount of force. So without activating your muscle a lot, it can generate large force. So uh, fast backswing and the active slowdown has both the mechanical advantage and mechanical uh, benefits and those biomechanical benefits. So there's no reason not to uh, use a fast backswing motion. Gotcha. The only fear the golfers may have is, uh, what if it's too fast so that uh, the motion of the club becomes unstable? That's what I get concerned about. Mm. But actually, what happens is we have active slowdown and a change in the direction and let it go. It has to be slowed down. Yeah. So this is part of the whole scenario here. You're not going <laughs> and then have a bouncing action like this. Rather, go ahead and slow down and then change the direction and let it go. You don't have to worry about the instability of the clever motion at the time. Yeah. So you have to, over, you have to overcome the fear of uh, fast direction. Okay. It, uh, it gives you a, a lot of benefits. Is it the same with irons as well? Irons, you can have a smaller motion. That's okay. Because the clubs, you know, shorter, sure. and it's a heavier. So uh, it, the, the characteristics are different. So you can go a bit smaller. That's fine. Yeah. But the same idea. Still, you should have a reasonable speed. It should direction. be consistent through the bag in some regard. I, you know. yeah, so first, overcome the fear of um, you know, the best direction. It, it doesn't hurt. Your okay. okay, now, uh, so uh, what you need to do is uh, increase the magnitude of the backswing. So bring the club here instead of stopping up there. So you should be able to see the club head on your left side here at the end of the backswing. Yeah. Like John Daly? Oh, no, John, John Daly goes yeah. almost yeah. down here. But about here. Wow. Okay. So, but you're stopping, you're stopping about here. Yeah. It's too small. You are not using the, the whole runway. Gotcha. Okay. Try to increase the engine power. But uh, you need to both com the combination of uh, longer runway and also good engine okay. to increase the speed here. Okay. Sense. So increase the range of motion. So uh, make the backswing bigger. Okay. And then also you have to engage these muscles instead of these muscles here. You currently tend to rely on these here, but you have to use these. Makes sense. So we have to speed up the backswing, okay. and then let let it go. So if you make the motion fast enough, oh, this feels uh, the head feels heavy. It does feel heavy. Yeah. So when you have enough speed here, automatically you will go all the way here, but unless you hold it here. Yeah. Or, unless you just lift it up with the arms here, then you will stop here. But if you feel the motion of the club, you will throw the club, then let it go and it will go all the way here. You will be able to see the head on this side. If you go here, then that means that you have a loose grip here, it will come down here. But if you still have a reasonably tight grip here, you just let the club go, you will stop about here. Okay, the goal is to reach this position. And then from there, start the downswing with the body turn, shoulder turn here, and then throw the, instead of yeah. using the arm muscles. Yeah, so let's first um, start with the rope swing here. The rope is uh, completely flexible, so you cannot manipulate it. And then so uh, you have to guide the rope with the body motion. Now here the goal is, in your image, it's always important to uh, have the right image. The key is the motion of the end of the rope. Your goal is to move the rope around the body fast, like this. Let the end of the rope go, yeah, go around your body, and eventually the rope will wrap your body like this under the armpit here, okay? So initially just a swing back and forth. Both hands. Hmm. Swing back and forth. And then pay attention to motion of the end of the rope 
Oh, this is slow. So, uh, no, no, no. Don't try to, uh, uh, you know, dominate it. Let the rope go. Your key, uh, the, 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 the main uh, focus is on the rope motion, not your bike motion. Okay, let me uh, try this. So what you be doing this, is you have to uh, figure out the key point here. It's always important to use your eyes to uh, recognize good pattern, and also feel it, right? Okay, just uh, use a simple body motion, but give good speed to the rope both ways. And also, currently, uh, your, your whole upper complex here turning like this. It's like a robot. Okay? So to make the motion smooth, that means you have to engage the whole body instead of just using the, like this, let it go, throw, throw, throw. Really enjoy the speed of the end of the rope. And then you control your head position a bit too high. That's why this happens. Bring the hands a bit down. Mm, back swing is too. Back swing is quite, uh, you know, uh, inactive. So you're just going like this, and then touch. Is that? Yeah. You are throwing the rope both ways. You are throwing the rope both ways. So. Uh, Throw the rope and then let it go around your body. Throw the rope and then let it go around your body. And another thing is that here, as you repeat this motion back and forth, everything should be continuous. Okay? This is one continuous motion. It's not stop and then come back and then swing. Rather, swing, 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 continuously. Currently, the rope is moving toward this point here. It's too high. Bring the hands a bit down, so aim this point. Make the back swing more active, not the down swing. Back swing, back swing. Make active back swing. No, it's not, it's not. So here. Oh, I have a uh, sore back muscle here. Okay. It's a bad posture, but uh, so let me try. Swing, mm, swing, mm, swing, mm, swing. You really? So basically, what you, what's happening is you're only putting effort in this direction, and in the back swing, just try to bring it up here. But back swing should be active. Make the end of the rope faster, so that it wraps around your body. On the back swing. Yeah. So yeah. So pay attention to the end of the rope. Your goal is move the end of the rope around and then make it stop here. Oh. Mm. Even from the beginning, what you do is instead throw. Uh -huh. uh. Now it's going too flat on this side. It's getting better, yes. Getting better, have active back swing. But in the back swing, your back swing plane is quite inward. You are, you are pulling the rope inward like this. Maintain the swing plane. So there are two purposes here for the rope swing. The first one is to develop consistent swing plane both ways. As you repeat the swing, on the way down or in the back swing, the rope has to move along the same plane. So this one is uh, for that. Okay. 
swing back and forth along the same plane instead of pulling this in here. So that's one thing. And then in the transition, you have to give enough time. So wait until the rope wraps around your body and then start the, the, the opposite turn. Uh, the hands are going too far out. Yeah, aim the aim the T. So swing, keep swinging. Swing, up. A second. Yeah, ready, go. Swing, swing. Okay. So if you look at the swing plane, the back swing plane is uh, going inward. I, I was standing on this side here, right? And then try to uh, record your swing. And your rope is pretty much moving along this direction here. Swing, swing. Okay. So in the back swing, instead of bringing the rope this way too much, you have to go a bit more laterally. And then in the downswing, in the downswing, bring the hands this way enough so you have to throw the rope more toward the target. You have to control the direction of the rope. So first you have to you have to definitely feel the motion of the rope. And then two, you should be able to adjust the, the direction you're moving the rope. So aim me. Okay, how about this one here? So throw this way. Mm -hmm. So then the back swing plane should be also adjusted. Match match the back swing plane and down swing plane. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, the back swing plane is getting inward. And then so here at the top. No need to control this. As long as you throw it, the momentum will bring the rope here. So if you want to adjust the backswing plane, just throw it. Using the momentum of the rope, don't turn all the way. Instead of uh, moving the body like this, you're forcing the rope motion. So it's yeah. As you bring this back here, if your body turns this way here, you're pulling it in here. That's why the rope is going inward. But if you give enough speed and then throw the rope, then the rope will go automatically to this position here. Because of the momentum of the rope, it will go here. Instead of keep influencing the rope motion. Throw enough. So give just enough speed here. Throw and with the speed, you'll be able to bring the rope here. You have to use in the back swing, you have to use the momentum of the rope. More active action, active action. Feel the, feel the motion of the end of the rope. As you swing back and forth, more than anything, you have to feel the motion of the end of the rope. No, no, back swings are still too slow. As fast as you can. To the, to the level you feel uncomfortable, somewhat uncomfortable. You are not breaking out of that. Uh, no, no, no. That's a downswing. I'm asking faster backswing. That's better. Yeah. Oh, now it's getting slower, slower. It's getting slower, slower, slower as you repeat. 
So when I say fast the back swing, it's the back swing, not the down swing. Okay? When you have fast the back swing, down swing becomes automatically active because uh, your body is in better condition to swing hard than the down swing. So all you need is an active back swing. And then also here. Currently, what, what you're doing is whip, whip, whip like this. Instead, whip, let it go, whip, let it go. You have to connect the back swing to down swing. The motion should be continuous instead of this jerky. So what you are lacking is uh, the shoulder motion near the top here. The shoulder here, here, here. watch this. Instead of just bringing here and then try to swing this way, your shoulder has to turn continuously and then let go. Yeah, you uh, just uh, your shoulder should be alive. Okay, so turn the shoulder continuously and bring the ropes back and forth. Yes, swing, swing, swing. That's a bit too uh, whippy in the back swing. So here, the swing motion is a smooth but fast. The rope motion should be smooth but fast. Mm, let it go. Mm, let it go. Mm, let it go. Oh. And then turn the shoulder continuously. Turn the shoulder continuously. Wind up and then let it go. Let it go. Wind up. Let it go. Still, it's a bit too whippy in the back. It's too jerky. It's a part of the reason why the back swing becomes jerky when you try to increase speed is because your right leg is not working that much. Right. You just try to turn here, push the ground with the right leg. You have to stand on the right side in the back swing. You have to support your body weight with the right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Whoa, this is a lot better now. Okay, so let me record this. Keep going, keep going, swing, make it continuous. Make it continuous both ways. By turning the shoulder continuously and use the right leg good in the back swing. Stand on the right side. Okay. Okay. And to get any one of these things, it's a workout too. You will not be able to recognize uh, that uh, it's you. Okay? Because you are completely different now. Make it continuous. Make it continuous both ways. By turning the shoulder continuously, and they use the right leg good in the back swing. Stand on the right side. Okay. The motion is a lot smoother now. A lot better connected. I'm so rigid up top. Because you have you have done it that way. Yeah. But you have really have to use the back swing to change these things. Even it, in this one here, back swing is kind of. Passive here. Yeah, I can tell. But, but the last one is in the back swing. Particularly at the end of the back swing, you still your body is moving instead of stopping. Here, at the end of the back swing, everything pretty much stops. Now, this one, you see, the shoulder keeps turning. This is the key. You should be able to use the body. Fluidity. And then, yes, yeah, start the down swing with the body and then uh, squeeze it and let it go. Okay. So, um, yeah, you, are, you started the reprogramming uh, your motion pad already, which is good. So let's try it again. So always keep in mind that you need to keep the body moving all the time, particularly the shoulders. Yes, yes. Swing. 
who wind up let it go. So when you want to swing hard in the downswing, all you need is just to keep good wind up from there, let it go. When you shoot an arrow, mm, let it go. So you know to swing hard, you have to emphasize the back swing, act, yeah. more active back swing, more wind up here. Yeah, use the body, wind up, throw, wind up, let it go, wind up, let it go, yes. Now, the difference between this and your original swing is that that active swing is coming from good wind up in the back swing. Now, you're preparing your body well in the back swing, using that you're swinging. In your original swing, you just bring this up here and then try to, that's big difference. So we have to use the back swing as a counter movement. Well, you have to connect the back swing to down swing. That means the shoulder keeps moving like this. <coughs> Instead of okay, so uh, the, the the rope swing is really uh, useful for that. Now, the rope is uh, flexible, so depend uh, regardless of uh, how high your hand goes still the rope will tend to wrap around your body. But if we use an orange wheel, it may be a bit different. Now you have to finish this task quickly, otherwise uh, you will get tired. This is heavier, a lot heavier than uh, you know, all this. So swing back, uh, hold it uh, in the middle of the grip. No need to hold it really long, okay. And then the, this is somewhat flexible. So still you have to work with this and in terms of timing. And the, but it's a heavier, so it may be easier to feel the motion of the end of the whip. Swing back and forth. Initially go easy, just to, just to feel the flow. Uh, and here, as you swing, try to minimize the bending at the top. When, yeah, when the whip bends a lot, what it means is uh, the end of the whip wants to go this way, you're not allowing it. You're forcing it in the opposite direction. That's why it has a lot of bending. Instead, instead let it go all the way here. It will have a little bit of bending because still you have to slow down this. Okay, so it will have a, a little bit of bending, but try to minimize the bending instead of working against it. Try to dominate. Now, currently, currently the head is moving up and then also cross over here. You have to keep it a bit lower. So as if you are dropping it uh, behind your back. So the easiest uh, way to do it is to feel the motion of the whip here. If you have enough speed here, using the speed and let it go, then it will end up here. Let it go. Let it continue the motion instead of using your arm and try to stop and then force it. Okay? Let it go all the way. So your goal in the back swing is again feel the motion of the end of the whip and then let the end of whip, end of the whip go enough here instead of forcing it here. So your body has to work with the whip so that you can continue the whip motion here. So, so uh, go easy with your wrist a little bit, and then feel the motion of the end of the whip. Yeah. Mm, here's, here's one thing here. If, if you have the feel of uh, the whip going this way, aligning this way here, along the shoulder, then when you turn the shoulder 90 degrees, it's a crossover quite a bit. So as you go up this way, you have to let the right forearm supinate like this. Okay. Instead of going here, lift the, lifting the elbow and going this way, the, the, the thumb is going this way. But if you introduce a little bit of uh, supination here, the thumb is uh, pointing behind you. But so he's like the supination motion.
of the forum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then let it go a bit more. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, uh, in your case, go, go to the top. It goes about here, and it's always pushed after that this way here. So let it go this way here. Okay, this is the target position, gotcha. and you should be able to see the head here. Yeah. So by paying attention to the head motion, let it go around and then nicely slow down this way here, instead of pushing it that way. Okay. So you have to again, you have to be aware of uh, the head motion. Yeah? Hmm. And then in order not to, in order not to move the head that way. So you have, have to nicely slow down this motion. And then, and then here, that slowing down is not intentionally done by your arms, but let me, let me show you this. Again, if, stand, stand on that. If you are aware of um, the motion of the end of the whip here, let it continue, and then you're here. Okay? Continue the motion, it's here. But what's happening? You are lifting the arm here. So just turning the forearm to give you a bit of supination. Go, go more, go more. Oh, uh, here. You see, you already your hand is turning this way. Go this way. Can you do this? No, you don't have to be a lot of this here. Just a natural uh, posture here. But the thing is, the feel is you have to let the we go this way here, behind your back here, gotcha. instead of crossing this way here. This is uh, what you need to do. And then there, yeah, yeah, so adjust the hand position slightly. So basically, basically what you need is uh, the forearm supination slightly, then it goes this way here. So have the feel of uh, running the whip this way, over your right shoulder running this way here. Yeah. So let it go, allow the end of the whip continue, yes, yes. Now make the back swing a bit uh, more active, and oh, now this time it will push. Oh, one thing, if on this side, in the back swing, it goes flat here, then it's definitely pushed this way. So you have to bring it a bit higher here. To that position, yes, directly. Earlier, I, I told you that you tend to bring the rope inward here because it goes flat here. It goes flat and then try to lift up and always the head goes to the crossover position. So imagine this is the target position. You are starting from here and then let the whip go and all the way to that position instead of bring this in and then try to lift the arm. You have the beginning and the end, so you have to connect the two dots. Yeah, yes, it goes a bit flat here. And then your hands are not going high enough. You're stopping about yeah, you here. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Again, use uh, the one way. Longer run, yes. Ah, this time it was flat. Hmm. Still in the backswing, you are not using the body, that's why. Stand on the mat. In the backswing, if you use the body well and then throw, throw this and let it go all the way that you have here. Still you try to, instead of throw and then keep the motion. That throwing is happening here. And that's not the arm driven, driven, driven throw. Yeah, you use the, have to use body. So uh, keep keep swinging. Don't you don't have to swing hard, but uh, make it continuous and the feel the feel the motion of the, the end of the whip. Hmm. Still, it's uh, all the arm driven. Yes, it's arm driven here. Again, you don't have to swing hard, but uh, feel the motion of the all the whip all the way and let go. Hmm. 
Let it go. Mmm. Let it go. Mmm. Let it go. Mmm. Let it go. Motion should be consistent here along the same plane, like uh, the Robson. Okay, you have to have a good purpose here, right? Uh, and also one thing you need to feel is that instead of this body goes here and then try to do this, the leg actions are promoting this turn here, turn here, turn here. So you have to time, time these correctly. Use the leg to promote the turn, 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 <coughs> yeah. That way you can feel the motion of the end of the whip better. Mm, yeah, because you are still uh, turning flat. So, so what, it's just my hands need to be higher? No, no, no. It's not just a matter of the hands. You are not really using the momentum of the, the arms and club. Instead, you try to use the body, try to turn it around. No matter what happens, if you feel the motion here, then let it go, it will go here. Instead of okay. so using the body, throw the whip, throw the whip, and then let it go. Like that, yeah. Throw. It's coming all the way around. Keep swinging. Keep swinging. So play, play with the whip. It's a part of your body. Okay, it's a part of your body. Swing, swing. Give a time and then let it go. So at the end of each turn, at the end of each turn, both ways, give more time. That's a transition. When the direction changes, it's called a transition. The no, no need to fight here. Part of the reason why this goes here is because. You try to move the body while it's still going that way. But wait until this is completed. Your goal is to go all the way here and then start the downswing. Instead of rushing. Both, both ways in the transition give enough time. So no need to fight. Let it go. And then in the back swing, toward the end of the back swing, you have to feel the tension building here. With that, you're going down. Still, so the, the later part of the uh, back swing. Ooh, let it go. Wind up and let go. So if you're using lightsaber, oh, yeah, wing, yeah. wing, wing, wing. So if I imitate the end. You have to connect to the back swing motion to the downswing. So that way, if you connect your back swing to the downswing, you will really build the tension here. So it's not just a throwing here and then relax here, rather mm, it nicely slow down and then. <clears throat> This is too heavy, so we can have to do this forever. Uh, this is the heaviest in terms of the mass swing weight. It's the heaviest that, that I've ever seen. Okay. I, I could feel it. And when the clip is too heavy, then it affects your swing pattern. You have to drag it. Because you cannot, if this is too heavy, you cannot really let it go here. Instead, you have to drag it all the way. Okay, so uh, remove this weight or, or, or this weight here. Are these uh, the weights? What should the number, I understand it depends on everybody's weight. The heavy, so average. in terms of the swing weight, the heavy one 
the heaviest one, so I have seen so far, is about 450. The US 460 something. And then mass for men is about uh, 310. That's 340 something. Mm -hmm. What's like an amateur golfer weight supposed to be? Well, for men, it should be similar to what uh, those, the heavier side. Oh, it but, should be. Yeah, but, but yours is too heavy. I've never seen uh, this kind of number here. And I can feel it. When you have a heavy club here, if you are strong and you can dominate this, then it's okay. But usually when it's too heavy, then your swing pattern is affected by that. Okay. So uh, it's a bit too heavy. So remove one of these weights here in the head. And then by just removing one head, it may change uh, you know, a lot of things. Gotcha. But um, yeah, you, you, I don't really, to talk about the club, but a, a nest, you know, unless it affects the swing motion, then I usually I, I don't uh, talk about it. But this is too heavy. And in, your, in your case, you have to drag it, even in the back swing, particularly in the back swing, you, uh, you tend to drag it quite a bit, instead of letting it go. As you swing back and forth, you have to let the club go, go. But you're dragging. Then when you uh, use the orange whip, all this, basically I see that pattern. It's probably because of the club. But again, okay, stand on the mat. Let's swing back and forth. As if you are swinging. A ball. So keep it in your O here. Particularly in the back swing, when you start the back swing, feel the motion of the head here. After you finish the downswing, and then still continue motion here like this, let it go around you, but instead of, you don't let the head go around your body in the back swing. That's the problem. You always try to do something with the arms and the body. But both ways, the key is feeling the motion of the club head around your body. Both directions. Okay? The key is the color motion. You have to pay attention to the color motion. <laughs> instead of, at the end of the back, instead of quickly pulling the head down here, and then try to do something here. From here, from the beginning, feel the motion of the color head around here. The, the goal is to move the color head fast around your body here. Instead of going and then try to do this. Try to do this. This motion here. Let it go, let it go, let it go. You have to let the curve go. That's why you're having trouble because your body is pulling it in and then try to lift it up. That's a, it's unstable. If you pay attention to the curve motion here, moving the curve around your body, you will reach this. Pay attention to the motion. The goal is to move the clavet around your body as if you are swinging a rope. Feel, feel the motion of the clavet. Go round, round, around. Mm, still, uh, just a sec. Use uh, my club and let's see how it goes. Probably means that. So you'll be faster both ways, particularly the back swing. Keep swinging. Swing. Okay, here. Always uh, your club is moving up while your body starts turning. Swing.
So this is the, let's see from here, this is the end of the vector. You see you're going really flat here. The curve is now moving this way. Once, once it reaches this position, curve is going this way. See? And then when you start the downswing, from here, the hands are going down. The curve is going this way. You have to keep the curve head close to the swing plane. So again, so here, the hands are leading this too much in the back swing. And then at the top, again, the curve is here, really flat. Then around here, the head is going to, pretty much going horizontally. This is something you, you are doing. You have to feel it. Unless you know what you're doing, you cannot change. So, clearly what we see is that in your swing pattern, toward the top here, the curve head is going flat here and then push it up here. Instead, if you keep this motion, it has to go higher and then go here. Again, as I said, you have to use the plane here. Okay, move the club along the plane and then let it go to this position. Instead of, you're, you're pulling it in quite a bit. Uh, for that, just a second. Let's just swing this back and forth. Keep the arms straight. Do not bend the elbow, okay? And then try to move this thing here along this plane here, going this way, instead of going this way. So swing back and forth, about this high, this high. Swing back and forth. And also, also, oh, that motion is coming, all coming from your arms. So make a pendulum motion, just a throw a field, a small motion first. Throw, 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 throw. Oh, the arm is moving too, too early. Wait until this motion is completed and then start motion. Throw, throw, wait, throw, wait. Oh, it's too high, too high, too high. So relax here and feel, feel the motion of the Throw both ways, particularly in the back swing, you have to use the right leg. You have to stand on the right leg in the back swing. Yeah. Swing back and forth. Swing. Swing. Shift it this way, shift it this way, shift it this way, shift it this way, shift this way. Uh, it's too high, it's too high. When it goes too high, then you flex the elbow. Okay? So keep. Wait, 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 wait. So keep it about this high. So don't swing faster than that. So using the speed down here, and then keep enough speed to, so that it reaches about this position here. Okay. No, no more than that. Okay. And then relax your arms as much as possible, but keep it straight. And then using the throwing action, basically, you are moving both ways instead of using the arms, okay? Throw, throw, throw. Oh, particularly this side, you're starting too early. So go up here, then if this turns this way, that means your hand is already moving that way, so it keeps moving this way. So make sure you finish the motion like this, and then start. In the back swing, you have to really stand on the right side. So here, if I, if I do this with the relaxed arms here, swing, 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 throw, 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 higher, throw, throw, 
throw, throw, throw, throw, throw, throw, throw using the body. If this is a heavy bag of cement, you, you try to load this on the back of the truck, you don't use the arms. You have to use the legs. And then using the arms, you're going too high. Okay. Relax, relax the arms, just keep it straight. Using the, using the lower body slightly, then shift both ways and then swing nicely. Uh, and then on this side, you try to slow this down using the arms. Don't slow it down? No, 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 it's just uh, let it go nicely. That the gravity will slow this down. No need to fight. Relax, let it go. So feel that you are throwing it. And then that should come from your low body action. Again, again here. Let me let me try this. Watch me doing this. Starting from smaller one. Swing, swing, throw, throw, throw and wait, 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 throw and wait. The main difference between you and me is that toward the end, I give enough time. I don't try to uh, hold it, to stop it. I don't use my arms. I just let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. So I generate the speed only enough to bring the, this is called evil, but the evil to this position here. But if you swing too hard, you have to slow, slow that intentionally using your arms. But with this, I want you to feel how to use the body to move this around instead of your arms. So here, just the shifting the body laterally here. Throw, 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 throw. Throw, throw, throw. Nice uh, pendulum motion. So both ways, almost a symmetric motion. That means that uh, when you swing that way, you have to shift it to the right more. Mm, still, it's a failure. It's coming from the arm. You have to try to control this with the arms. Yeah. But the here, so the key is the key is moving this thing along this plane here instead of going flat. Here. 